Welcome to Exploring the Palette. The palette is a collection of components that you can drag and drop into your network. We can access the palette by navigating to the menu under Dialogues and selecting Palette Browser. This will open up the palette in a floating window. And we can also open the palette by clicking on the tray icon in the top left of our UI. This interface is organized in a folder structure. So you can click to collapse or expand sections to see their components. Let's go ahead and look at the generators section. When you click on a component, I'm clicking on Julia here, you'll see that a thumbnail preview will appear at the bottom. And at times there may be information here for specific components. Let's go ahead and look at this noise component. I'm going to click and drag that into my network. The noise component generates a variety of noise patterns based on a selected noise type. Let's click on this type parameter and we can look at some different options here that we have for our noise. What's great about this component is that it offers noise patterns that are not typically found inside of the noise top, like this cool star noise. We also have the image filters section. This section has different filters that you can use for your images. I'm going to pull in the RGBA delay effect. Here we have RGBA delay and this uses a cache select top to cache the RGBA channels separately, allowing you to delay the movement of each channel by a specified number of frames. So I'm going to change this green delay here. And if I move this slider, you'll see that now this green channel is delaying separately from these other channels. Great. Now let's look at mapping. This is a great section for looking at different projection mapping techniques. We have cam snapper. Cam snapper is a projection mapping tool. That's great. If you have a 3d model of the physical structure that you're mapping, we also have Cantan mapper. Cantan Mapper is a toolkit that uses 2D polygons for mapping and masking your content. And we also have Stoner. Stoner is a grid warping and keystoning tool with warping and corner pinning. It's super helpful and easy to use for simple mapping techniques. Next here, let's skip over to Ableton. The TD Ableton section has tools for linking Touch Designer with Ableton Live. If we click on Live 11 and then TD Ableton Package, let's drag that into our network. We'll notice here a pop-up will appear. There we go, connecting to Live. And it's saying that I have no connection to Live. This TD Ableton Package is what you would use to maintain your connection to your Ableton project. You can check out more about that here on the about page, clicking on the help to look more about it in the wiki. Next, we have our tools section. This tool section has a bunch of really helpful components like blend modes. Blend modes is a great way to look at all the different compositing options inside of touch designer. We also have chroma key for, as the name implies, chroma keying and using green screen. And we also have particles GPU. Particles GPU is great. It's a compute shader based particle system and creates really awesome particle systems. Awesome. So that is just a look at some of these components. If I go ahead and collapse this derivative section and then click on my component section, we can actually create our own folder and add our own custom components so that we can easily and quickly access them inside of touch designer. Let's go ahead and right click on my components and add a folder. I'm going to call this my custom tools and I'm going to click done. And now you'll see under my components, I have my custom tools. I'm going to click on my custom tools. You'll notice nothing is there yet. Let's go ahead and create a quick component that we can add to our new tools section. I'm going to double click on the network and add a base. I'm going to jump in my base. I'm going to double click on the network again, and let's add a in top. Awesome. I'm going to right click on my in top 
and add an edge top. And then I'm going to right click on my edge and add an out. Awesome. Let's go ahead and here next to my in top, I'm going to double click on my network and add a movie file in top and then just connect that to the second input of my in top. So I have a default image. Great. Now I have this little component that is a quick way to get an edge effect. I'm going to rename this component to be edge effect. Perfect. And now I'm going to click and drag this component onto my custom tools. Now you can see here, this list is populated with edge effect. So I'm going to go ahead and delete my edge effect and then drag it in from the palette. Now you'll see that I have this component here that I can reuse. You can actually update your components here by right clicking and then clicking browse folder. What that will do is that will open up a folder that will show you the file path and the list of toxes that you have available in your custom components. Let's say you wanted to pull something from a separate project and you had a tox and you wanted to edit that in your file system. You could go ahead and for example, pull that in. I'm just going to copy and paste it and call this, um, sparkle effect and click enter. So now I have another component, let's say as an example that I've added to this folder. Well, inside of touch designer, rather than closing and reopening it, I could just right click and then click refresh folder. And then I would have that sparkle effect available to use inside of my networks. This is just a quick run through of working with the palette. And I hope that you found this video useful.